I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thanks for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering and data analytics. In this episode, we're going to go back to our Python on Snowflake playlist, and uh, we're going to create a data warehouse, we're going to create a database, and we're going to create a schema, and uh, we're going to create a table in our database and put some data into our table and retrieve some data out of the table. And you might remember in our last episode, we showed how to install the Python connector for Snowflake and, uh, and all of that stuff. So we got connected, we did our first query. Well, in this episode, we're gonna go one step further and we're gonna create some data and get some data out. So without further ado, let's get to our Python on Snowflake warehouse creation. Okay, so to get started, uh, we're gonna grab a new file here from our idle shell and uh, uh, if you didn't uh, see how to connect with Python, check out the last video uh, where we installed everything you need to get connected to Snowflake. And uh, this, was the, uh, this was the code that we used uh, in order to, uh, to connect to and get the current version. So if I run it, um, it just connects to uh, Snowflake and we get our nice version number um, that pops up. Uh, from our Python, or pardon me, our, our Snowflake instance, and uh, we're kind of ready to go there. So I'll leave I'll leave the uh, the print statement there of our version and our cursor uh, that we used last time, because uh, we're going to reuse that in order to uh, create some uh, uh, some objects in Snowflake. Now, once we're connected to uh, our Snowflake instance we can uh, we can run some commands against it um, and the first thing that we might want to do is to create a warehouse uh, to provide resources for our database and uh, so we can say create warehouse if not exists and then our warehouse name and uh, I'll just call this one project warehouse and uh, that's going to be our SQL string um, and then we'll we'll use a CS or cursor dot execute and uh, that's going to basically uh, execute our statement and uh, get us going uh, with a new warehouse. And once the warehouse has been created, um, we'll go ahead and we'll create a database. And, uh, and we'll say uh, create database if not exists. Uh, then uh, our, our database name, and I'll just call it project underscore database for now. And we'll run a cs.execute on that. And uh, that is going to create our database which is what we want and then and then we'll uh, create another statement uh, for use database and we're going to say uh, project database and that's going to um, set our usage to that database and then uh, we'll run an, an execute on that and uh, and then from there uh, we can create a schema in in the database in order to do that we'll I uh, use the create schema uh, statement and that's going to uh, uh, create a schema for us. So we'll say create schema if not exists and I'll just call that project schema for now and uh, and then we can run and execute on that and that'll um, that'll execute um, that statement. Um, so now we have uh, a warehouse, we've got a database uh, uh, which uses a resource from the warehouse and uh, we're using the database, we created a schema for it, and uh, that's um, gonna um, help us out quite a bit. So what we should do is we'll go up ahead of these statements and put some print um, statements in there just so that we have some feedback from the console to, uh, to show um, uh, you know, what's happening as it happens, and so we can sort of see how long these things might take. Um, and uh, sometimes when we have uh, commands like this, they take a really long time. And you might have four or five commands in there. And if you put a print in between them, you'll know uh, which ones are taking longer than others. Um, I expect in this case, these uh, commands will go uh, very quickly. Um, and, uh, but we'll see. And, uh, but we definitely want to have some feedback. So that's an important thing to make sure you do when you're scripting. And now we'll know uh, as we're creating the warehouse, creating the database, and uh, 
using the database and creating the schema, we'll know uh, as, as it happens, as each of those um, um, happens. And if we have to run the script again, because we use the if not exists um, clause in there, um, we can rerun re this. Um, and if it's already created, then we don't need to, it won't execute the uh, statement again. So it's kind of a, a neat way of doing it because we are going to try to put some data in to our database here um, in a minute and uh, being able to rerun this uh, over again is quite useful. So uh, I'll put a creation complete so we know that the uh, creation complete uh, part of our um, script here is, uh, is done and uh, we can uh, give this a try. So I'll hit a 5 and uh, we should see 5.7.2, wow, that went very quickly. Uh, creates a warehouse, creates a database, uh, use the database, and we're good to go. So creation is done, and um, um, we can continue on. So these next few statements uh, are kind of optional. Um, I just put them in um, since this is how you might um, approach your warehouse if you, <clears throat> if you were starting and the warehouse already existed. Uh, obviously, we created this warehouse and we uh, created the database and we already said that we're using it. Um, but uh, you can, you also need to uh, execute a use warehouse statement, <clears throat> which is going to uh, sort of put you in, into uh, those resources. And, uh, and uh, typically, we also, uh, we're going to do use database statement. And those are going to put us into the right warehouse and uh, database, and then we can execute that one as well. And uh, and then from there, uh, we'll use our schema, our project <clears throat> project schema, and um, uh, so that um, everything that we do here happens under that schema. And uh, and then we'll be ready to create a table and populate it and and get some data out of it. Uh, so we'll put a, a cs.execute on there um, to, uh, to put us in the right schema, and we are good to go. So from here, we'll do a create or replace uh, table um, so that we can rerun this over and over again if we need to. Um, and uh, we'll create uh, a project comments table, um, which uh, can house some comments about a project. This is just for example. Um, and uh, that's going to allow us to, uh, to create a table. So I'll put that into uh, brackets so we can do a multi-line um, string here for our SQL statement. Um, so I'll do uh, create a replace uh, table, project comments, and then we'll do ID is an integer and comment is a string. And I'll go up and put a print statement above that so we can see what's happening. Um, and uh, we can do a print, um, you know, create a table, uh, so we know that that's happening when our script is executing, and um, and then we can move on. We can do a cs.execute SQL, and uh, and then we can do <coughs> a, another uh, print statement, and we'll do an insert uh, insert a few rows, um, so we know that that's what's happening there. And from there, we can do an insert statement. We'll do uh, insert into uh, project comments. And uh, that will allow us to, uh, to do an insert into there. So we'll do a multi-line SQL string for that. And I'll put uh, ID and comments as our fields. And, uh, and then I'll drop that down to the next level, or to the next line, I should say. And, uh, I'll put uh, values and then I'll just put one and uh, some comment in there. Um, my, my project comments can go here or something like that. Um, and uh, um, that gives us sort of an idea of what it's like to do an insert against the Snowflake uh, database. So we can close that off and, um, and then uh, we'll do a execute on that statement. And then uh, just for expedience, I'll just copy and paste uh, those lines uh, a couple of times. Uh, we could do it all in one statement with a multiple SQL insert, uh, but uh, I'll just uh, paste those for now.
So as I paste those in, I've got three SQL statements, and I'll just change the, the ID to two, and then I'll change the text a little bit so that we can see what's going on. I'll say some more comments here, and I'll do uh, even more comments here, and, uh, and then um, from there, and from there, uh, we'll say uh, read some, some rows. Uh, we'll do a print for that, and then we'll do some, or we'll do a statement to get some rows out of our database. So we'll just say uh, SQL equals uh, select star from project comments, which is our project comments table in our database. And uh, that'll be a, a simple one to, to run. So we'll do a cs.execute on that. And uh, that's going <clears> to <throat> set the cursor. And, uh, and then we'll do uh, a fetch all, but we'll do it in a loop so that we can output the, so we can say for row in cs.fetch all. Um, then we'll say uh, um, uh, print. And then we'll just print row. And that should just give us some raw output that we can see that we've uh, retrieved some data. And, uh, <clears throat> and that's going to um, get some data for us. And we can put a print complete on the end just before we, uh, we kick it off. And uh, just check it over here to make sure I haven't made any glaring. Oh, yeah, I should change that to a 3 because um, it should be 1, 2, 3. And uh, yeah, I forgot my, uh, <clears throat> my brackets on the end of my uh, statement here. <laughs> And uh, um, I think that should be good. So I'll just uh, hit F5 here. Oh, I've got to save that. And then we'll just see how this goes. So we'll go through the first steps, even though it's already created the warehouse and everything. Uh, it's inserting a few rows. It's reading some rows. And there you go. So we've got our three rows from our database uh, that we created. And uh, that is how you create a warehouse. Uh, database a schema and insert and retrieve data from Snowflake. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to create a warehouse and a database in uh, Snowflake using Python. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. And uh, when you see the bell, make sure to click the bell so you'll be notified of any new content that I put up. If you have any questions or comments about what you saw today, please put those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer any questions you might have. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.